Oliver, a lot of talk in the markets and in the press about who may replace Bob Diamond. It's a very tricky one, isn't it? On the one hand, you need a political figure who will appease the politicians and the regulators and the baying public. Um, but as you write in your note today, you also need somebody who understands investment banking, really. Absolutely. I think that that's key. The investment bank was about 60% of the group's uh, pre-tax profit in the first quarter. So they really need to get someone in who understands investment banking. There'll be a lot of political pressure to get someone in who, who, who's from the retail banking side and who can please the public, please the regulators and, ple and please the politicians. But really at heart they've got to have somebody who understands the investment bank because if Barclays is going to improve its profits and its returns, it's really got to fix the investment bank which has got a lot of problems at the moment. Especially now that um, you know, a big part of that investment banking business is sitting in New York and by all accounts you know, Bob was um, you know, you know, one, considered one of them. You need someone yeah. to inspire those guys as well. Yeah, he, he, he was an American. He was an investment banker at heart. He was the guy who brought the uh, New York Lehman business into Barclays. So he was very much the figurehead there. So they have to get somebody who can really encourage and, and enthuse the New York-based investment bankers as well as the UK politicians. That's not an easy task. There's not many people who cover both bases. And I never thought I'd say this as um, uh, head of Lex, but um, a, a, a perhaps a rather radical solutions in the offing to what would be, you know, is, is quite a conundrum, really. It is. The, the, the bank could consider a co-chief executive uh, appointment, which is never popular. A lot of people say co-chief executives, it never works. You don't know who's in charge. Deutsche Bank has recently come up with just such a solution. They, they start, two chief executives started there um, last month. So there is some precedent for it, but it will be quite controversial. The advantage of it really is that it would allow uh, Marcus Aegis, the chairman, to appoint on the one hand a retail banker, perhaps Anthony Jenkins who already runs the retail bank, somebody who would be very politically acceptable in the UK. And then he'd have the freedom to look much more widely to find an investment banker to run the investment banking side. Uh, and the two of them could fit, sit together quite nicely, particularly in the context of the UK's Vickers reforms, which want to ring fence the, the retail banks off from the investment banks. Yeah, I was going to say that. I mean, the more you think about it, it actually sounds rather elegant in the sense that in the public's mind, you'd separate the, the, the two businesses, um, but they would still share, you know, sort of writing off each other's capital and any kind of cross-selling that may or may not exist. Um, but it, would, it actually sounds rather elegant, doesn't it? It could, it could work quite nicely. Uh, obviously, the, the two would have to get on well together. And there, there would be a lot, of, uh, a lot of naysayers around this. A lot of people say of it just won't work and you need the two people won't get on and you won't know who's in charge. But it could, in theory, it could sit quite nicely together and provide a, quite an elegant solution to, uh, to Barclays' Might problems. Might there be a risk that people see it as one step towards a breakup, perhaps? Uh, they might see that, but a breakup of Barclays is a long way off. There's a lot of problems with making that happen. The, the retail bank provides a lot of the capital that's used by the investment bank. To split them up, the investment bank would have to find an awful lot more capital, and that's not very easy these days. So that will be quite some way down the road. Well, Oliver, um, I'm sure you've given the Barclays board something to think about there. Um, I'll lick my foot if it actually happens, but it doesn't sound the silliest idea I've heard for a long time. Thank you so much.